started with a little person and a little Dusty. Dusty, you want to go first? Yes. Okay. So Dusty will talk about the bookstore and all the different ways that the bookstore can help you and or that they're doing for affordable learning solutions. Okay, so I'm going to hand out a couple of folders. This is what we typically give to new faculty, but it might not be something you have. Um, is, is this is kind of like a welcome packet that we give to new faculty hire. We just started doing this um, within the last year, and it just gives them some information on the bookstore. And the important thing to keep in mind is with the affordable learning solutions, um, there's a lot of things that you can do just through the bookstore that will qualify you as doing something for affordable learning. Um, you'll find in there that there's a whole list of different pieces of information. There's the meet the bookstore staff, who to contact, when you want to talk about books and digital books and you know all types of ebooks and those types of things, so who are the people that you would um, contact for that? You might have already started talking to or receiving emails from the buyers, saying that book orders are due kind of soon, and to turn those orders in. And depending on the school that you're in, um, would determine which buyer that you would be in contact with. Behind that, meet the bookstore is also um, a statement from our bookstore director. It talk, kind of talks about the bookstore, who we are, and then behind that is talks about the rental program, which we'll go into. Um, there's two big pieces in here that I would I would recommend that we take a look at. One is the Kennel Bookstore updates, and, talk, and right on the front page we have the affordable learning solutions um, statement and how that works with Kennel Bookstore. And then when you flip open on the inside of it, there are things that we have that maybe a lot of you don't know as far as used books, how much money we've saved the students over the years by doing rental books, um, alternate formats, customization, um, open education resources, and those types of things. We have a cut, we can do custom publishing through the um, copy center at Kennel Bookstore, and then there's digital course books and courseware. And what's interesting about this is that you don't have to go to great extremes to make something part of the ALS community. If you pick a book that we can rent, that reduces the price to the student. So that makes that a little more affordable to the student. I think on the website it said that the student spends on average about $800 a semester on books. Well, if every person was able to pick books or materials that we could rent, that drops that number down. If there are people that would be willing to go to a digital book, that drops that number down. Um, so there's a lot of different resources there that are available that would bring that $800 deal down to a smaller deal. And you have that ability um, to qualify through the Affordable Learning Solutions to do that. Used textbooks can qualify that. If you change a book that, you know, that maybe changes editions every single semester, and there's a lot of books that do that, or you just get into a book and all of a sudden they have a new book out. Well, if you go back to using the used book of it and you want to keep that one, and maybe you want to use part of the new one, you could do a choose between on it. So you could have the students either use the older edition or the newer edition, depending on how the formats are set. So there's a lot of choice that you have when you decide to choose what books you want for your classroom. And there's a lot of information that the bookstore can give you um, on the formatting of that book. So you may have a book that you use, or, or, some, or even, maybe not even a book, maybe it's, um, a supply or something that you use that the bookstore could give you alternate formats on. So if you just know that you have a book, we might be able to tell you that's available used, it's available as a rental, it's available as a digital, it's available as a PDF, you can customize it. So there are, uh, there's all these options that are part of that where maybe that's a $150 textbook new that we've all of a sudden we have lots of choices to make it lower. So the bookstore can help you with that. And the choices that you make to make sure that those things can happen for your classroom is by getting a hold of us early. Okay? One of the things that we are striving to do is try to get our adoption rates turned in on time. And so you each get a letter 
from us twice a year that says your book order is due by either October 31st, right, or April 15th. And there are two easy days to remember. One is Halloween, one is tax day. And those never change. So those, when you're, when you're thinking of setting your classrooms up, getting those materials and that information into us on time is really, really crucial. And the reason why we ask that is because it affects about, it affects the way that we can purchase books and drop the cost for the student. What happens is, is that if book orders are turned in late, we don't have the ability to go out and shop and find those used books. And so if you know you're gonna use a book every semester, you really, really like it, and you're gonna use it all the time, then turn your order in early. That way we have the greatest opportunity to find lower cost books for that. And as you know, they're all over the place. They're on the internet, you know, they're in wholesalers, warehouses, and so forth. But if we don't get a chance to get them right away, all the schools across the country are trying to pull those books in for them. Okay, so turning an adoption on time is really kind of an important thing to do. Um, statistically on adoptions, last semester we had a 38% turn in. Okay, and that's really, really low. Now there's a lot of things that, that factor into that. If you are working with a publisher for a custom book, and again, custom books are good because they can drive down the cost. If you don't need a book that's got you know, 80 chapters in it and you only use 15 chapters in it, then you can work with the publisher to customize that, which brings down the lower, lower price. You could also request that book be put into a loose leaf format, which drives down the price. So if you, there's a lot of things that affect the way, the reason why book orders are not turned in. Maybe you're still working with them, maybe you're still trying to figure that out. And, but you just need to let us know. If you let us know, that you're working with someone or working with a publisher to make it, to make a book for the next semester, then we don't take that into account as far as the percentages are when we when we go back and look to see how many orders are turned in on time. Does that make sense? Okay. So, 38 percent. The last fall, in fall, this this last fall, we had 2,700 book orders, individual book orders. Okay. So if you look at that percentage. 800 of them were turned in on time, okay? Out of 2,700-ish book orders, okay? Then we do another gauge, and we say, how many orders were turned in by buyback? And why would it be important for me to know how many orders are in for buyback? Because if you turn in a book order that you're gonna use that same book, we know about it, we can buy that book back from your students. If you don't turn in that book order, we don't know that you're using it again, the student comes back and buy it back, we say, I don't have an order for it, I can't, I can't get anything back for it. Okay? And that happens all the time. And most of them will say, go back to your professor, ask them if they're going to use it again. If they're going to use it again, tell them to give me a call so we can get in the system and we can take that book back. Because keep in mind that when we buy books back from your students, the books stay on campus, the money stays on campus. If we don't have that order and you turn that in at a later point, then we're, we've already gone off and ordered the books somewhere else. So we have, so we've taken the money and taken it off campus versus giving it back to the students, okay? So the factor that I look at for the second piece of it is, is how many book orders were turned in before buyback started in order for us to lower the cost to the, to the students for the next semester. So for fall, we were 38% on deadline, October or April 15th. By the time buyback hit, we only went to 48%. So again, 2,700 adoptions, only half of them were turned in by the time we got to buy them. So then we spent May, June, July ordering books that we probably didn't need because all of a sudden the order came in, oh, they used it. Oh, well, we could have bought it back from the students, okay? Now we go out and buy those books brand new because maybe now the, the availability of a used book is gone. So now we've, we've charged a student, we're gonna charge a student more for that new book. Or that student's going to go and try and find it online and try and get a lower price. So when you're looking at book adoptions for your upcoming semester, the sooner those orders can get turned in, the better chance we have to order books at a, at a reasonable cost or to drop that. And that kind of qualifies you for the affordable learning solution. So part of your decision making process is you're going to be asked to um, choose a title for the next semester that would be able to fit into this into this uh, mold here, right? So that's one of them. When you talk about rentals, the sooner we have the rental information, the sooner we can go after it, it's gonna become a rental. 
Again, it works the same way as a used book does or a buyback. If we don't know the order, we might miss getting that, that book as a requested rental. So when the time comes, they may say, they may say no, we're not, we're not gonna rent those anymore. Does that make sense? Okay, so you can tell what Reynolds is now. Reynolds is the new, the new thing on campus. Okay, everybody wants to rent a book. And you can tell by the charging on that second page, we've saved the students thousands and thousands of dollars by renting them. And in most cases, rentals are really, really good for students because maybe they're in the lower division course and they're not gonna keep that on their shelf you know, for the rest of their career or their life or whatever it is they do. So they don't really wanna keep that book, they just wanna be able to rent it to the class and then turn it back in when it's done. Now there's no buyback on it, but then again, they, their cost has dropped significantly. So let me give you an idea how the rental works. You have a brand new book that costs you $100, okay? So we've, you've, you've adopted a book, we buy it, and the student's cost is $100, brand new. If we can get that book in a rental, okay, that's gonna cost that student $75 to purchase. So they can either buy it for $100 brand new, they can buy it as used for $75. If that book is part of a rental program, they can rent that new book for $50. Okay? They can rent that used book for $35. And if there's another format available, like the digital side of it, they might be able to purchase a digital copy for $20. Okay, so now you've given the student five options of book, of, of one book. They've got five choices to make. But that's because that might have been turned in on time versus telling me in July that we're gonna use that book. And now I only have one option. I can only get it new. Does that make sense? If you have questions, let me know because I, there's, a, there's a lot of misunderstanding out there as far as I think how the bookstore tries to bring that cost down to the students. We have, Fresno State has the lowest gross margin in the CSU system as far as the bookstores are concerned. So we run at a 23% margin. And most, uh, most schools are 24, 25, 26, 27. Okay, so we try to keep the cost down that way we keep the cost down by trying to get you to bring in the book orders, okay? Not only am I a part of this group's committee for this, but uh, Ben was talking earlier about the CSU Chancellor's Office has a committee that does not only just what you guys are doing here today, but we have CSU Rent Digital, which is the Chancellor's Office's way of trying to bring down digital prices in books. And we sit on that committee out there in Long Beach. So we have a lot of different ways that we're trying to bring in different um, options for your student to, to, to lower those prices. Okay. So if, if um, the publisher has a new textbook that's out, if we don't specifically say, well, let them use all the old editions, then you wouldn't buy back any old editions? Um, not true. What we can do is that Let's say that you have a fourth edition book that you're using currently, and you want to move to the fifth edition. Is that what you'd like to do? But you'd also like to give them the option for the fourth? No, because when I teach politics, the only thing that ever changes is during election year. So right. really, it doesn't matter what book they have. But I've never specifically said, let them use any edition. Okay. I've never specifically done that. So I don't know how it works. Do you, do you not buy back the old ones if a new one comes out and that's what's sent to you? How, how does that work? No, do what happens is, is that you, you're the ones that are telling us what to buy, okay? So if you are using a fourth edition right now, and there happens to be coming out a fifth edition, we'll let you know. You know what, you used the fourth edition last semester just to let you know there's a fifth edition coming out in January. Do you want to use it? Now at that point, you make that decision to say, um, you know what, no I don't. But then again, maybe I will, but I'll let them use the fourth one. So what we do, is that because you're still wanting to use the older edition, you don't care whether they have either one, we're gonna buy back the fourth edition, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna reorder, if we need to order, we're gonna order some copies of the fifth edition, okay. so that both are available on the shelf. Okay. Now keep in mind with the rental program now, the great thing about it is, well, when we ordered the fourth edition previously, it's gonna be a lower price, because it's an older edition, we bought them back, we're able to lower the cost. And at one point before the rental program, if you get to choose between and you ordered the fifth edition of a book, that book obviously is gonna be higher because it's only gonna be available new. There's not gonna be any used copies floating around because it's just come out. And, and it's gonna be a higher price because it's only a new book and it's a new edition. 
But with the rental program, the great thing is, is that because there are new editions coming out, that's what the wholesalers want. They want those new copies, so they're willing to put a rental price on that. So you might have a fourth edition used books on the shelf. We wouldn't order new ones um, of an older edition, but we would bring in as many used copies as we can. So you'd have that price on the shelf, and then we'd bring in the newer edition, but then we'd rent it, which will drop that price down from maybe $100 to $50. So, yeah, so the students can choose again, and both of them are kind of comparable as far as pricing now because we were able to rent one, and then we bought one back. So the choice for old editions, new editions, using both of them, um, that's entirely up to you, what you want to do with those. And we will let you know that. So when you turn in a book order, when we put it in our system, it'll tell us if there's a new edition available. And then we can send you an email back and say, you know what, did you want to go with this one? Did you want to keep both of them? What is it that you wanted to do, okay? So that's one great way of trying to get affordable learning solutions to your students, okay? It's just by those things. And this newsletter explains a lot of that and why we ask for used books and why we ask for the adoption and so forth, okay? There's a second piece to this. And in the back of the folder on the left, you'll see there's a, um, there's an item that says course material requisition form. This is the form that we now ask um, that you turn in with all of your book orders. Okay, and it's electronic. So if you go to our um, Kennel Bookstore's website and you click on faculty services, it'll take you over to that and that's how you can turn it in. You can turn it in this way. You can give us a call and tell us, you know, that these are the books I'd like to order and we will send you a copy of this to fill out. But the biggest reason that we have this form now is because of the Higher Education Opportunity Act. You all are familiar with the HEOA? Yes, no, kind of, sort of. Okay, in a nutshell, because it's such a big document, HEOA says is that the school, we must have the information available to the student as much as feasible at the time of registration. Another reason why we ask for those book orders by October 31st or April 15th, because three to four weeks later, the students are able now to go online and look at their class potentials, what they, what the, you know, what they think that they might want to take. And then we're also able to list on the website as an inquiry what books that particular professor is using, okay? Student, the HOA law says that the students should be able to have the ability to see what the class may cost them before they sign up. So that, again, that they have choice. So if there's a math class that's got a $200 textbook, math 10, let's just say, and then there's two sections being offered and one professor is using a $200 textbook and one professor is using class handouts, and it doesn't gonna cost them anything, students have the right to choose which class. They have a right to be able to know that when they sign up for classes. Again, as much as possible is what the, what the law states because if you're working with a publisher, you're not gonna have your order in on time. So an HEOA now is in compliance mode, meaning that as of July, now they are asking the, the campuses to comply with the HEOA. And there's so many other things involved with that, um, you know, accessibility issues and all of those other pieces of it. But this is why this requisition form has come out now, is that we need to have information. Even though we may not be your choice for a course material item that you're using for your class, for example, if you are teaching a judo class and you require your students to have a uniform. Candle Bookstore does not offer that. We don't have any lined up on the, on the shelf, okay? But the students are required to buy one, right? So they're gonna have to make a purchase. So you may say to us, they need to have a uniform. We're gonna put on the website when they sign up that this class has costs, you know, go to class first. But we have, we have to give them that information. That, they, that there is a potential cost for this class. Maybe it's a theater class and they have to go see three plays, okay? That's a cost to the student and we need to know that. Let's say the judo uniform is, is for someone who's on scholarship, okay? They can't go and purchase it offsite. We will have to make accommodations to purchase that so that they can use their scholarship. So that's information we have to know. So a lot of classes may have those situations you know, if it's, if it's an art class and you require them to have a certain paintbrush and a certain set of colors and a certain set of chalk or whatever it might be, 
we may or may not have that available to them. We may want to send them to Allard's or to some other place in Fresno to pick, pick up their materials, but there's a cost involved with that to the students. So what we have to do is we have to be able to list on the website when they sign up for that class that there is a cost to go to class first or go look at the syllabus or whatever that it is that they might need to do. Okay, that's what, that's what HEOA tells us we need to do. And because Kendall Bookstore is the curator of all the information on campus, and we have to be able to know what every class is doing, all the way down to are, are you using handouts? Are you using OERs? Now you don't have to put specifically what you're using, you know, and how many pages it is, but do you use handouts in class? Do you use library resources? You know, do you use the OERs? We have to be able to tell the student that. And again, if you go to the website and you've already turned that information into us, it says it right there on the student. Class uses handouts, OERs, whatever. So we have to have that information. So that's this is what this has come up to be. So if you look on this one, it'll tell you what are your books, if you have books, what's the ISBN, fill the information out. As you get down towards the bottom, it'll ask you, are you using iClickers? Are you using Criterion? Okay, and you mark yes or no. Will you be using Kennel Copy Center? I mean, is there is there a syllabus that you have the Kennel Copy Center use every, you know, print for you every semester so that they students can purchase that? Yes or no? If it does, there'll be a drop-down box that says, you know, what is that? So that our copy center knows that this is coming in as an order. Okay. On the back page, these are the two most important pieces. And again, it all speaks to affordable learning because if you're using course handouts and you're using that, you're showing right there on the website that you are using an alternative. Um, source, okay? Uh, let's see, will you ask students to purchase something from an outside source? If you click no, you're done. If you click yes, it's gonna ask you, what are you, at? What are you asking them to purchase? Or is there a link? Some classes I have, um, professors use a website because there's exercises on there that they use and they have to be able to use that website. So they, just, they provide the link and we have that link available for the students to go over it. Sometimes it gives them the price and sometimes it doesn't. But at least that information is there. And then the other one is, will you be using OERs and that can be handouts, library resources, et cetera. And if you say yes, the box will drop down and it'll say, what are you using? And all you have to say is I'm using class handouts or I'm using a library resource or, or whatever. Okay, and that gives it out. Now, what's interesting is that we started sending our letters out last week for professors to turn in orders, and they send the email back and they go, yes, I'll be using this last year. That's all the information we got. We didn't get the form, you know, we got, that's what I'll be using, same thing, okay? Keep in mind, we have to have this filled out every semester, because if somebody from HEOA for compliance issues comes in and says, okay, let me see your stuff, we have to have that. So you, should, go ahead. So we don't have standing orders anymore? There, no, with the exception of standing orders, we're going to send those to you as well. If nothing changes on it, you're just going to send it back and go, yep, I approve. So once you have the form filled out and you don't change anything, what we're going to do is we're going to send you a note if it's a standing order that says, yes, we have your standing order, please confirm. And we'll send it right back to you, and if nothing's changed, you're going to say, yep, that's it. And then all we do is change the semester date. If you don't have a standing order, but you use the same book, okay, we're gonna send you exactly what you sent us last time. But again, if anything has changed on that bond, especially if you're using OERs or you're using handouts or you're not requiring them to use something anymore, you need to fill it out. If it's the first time you've filled it out, you need to be very complete and very thorough, okay? We will keep these on file electronically, and then that way, the next semester, we can send them back to you, okay? As she had mentioned standing orders, and I will tell you, remember I said that 38% were turned in on time by the deadline? You wanna guess how many of those were standing orders? Take a wild guess. 30%. So when I don't include my standing orders, 8% were turned in on time, okay? And again, I don't think, I, I, I understand, we all get it. You have a thousand things on your plate, okay? You have all kinds of things that are, that, are, that are pushing you in other directions. And here comes the bookstore, turn in your book order, and you're going, I'm not even out of fall, and you're already asking me for spring. Okay, I get that, okay? But the important thing is, is that if we get that, your students are saving money. That's the key. 
you know, and we and, and it's just really, really simple. You know, if it takes two minutes to fill this form out if you've done it before. Or it takes a response saying confirm. It really doesn't take a whole lot of time. And it means so much to the bookstore and to your students because we have that ability now for us to turn on the buyback switch or to turn on let's get the used book switch. Okay? And so I realize that you have plenty of things that you need to do, but please try and remember to turn that in and, to, and, and encourage everybody else to do it. Okay, I'm going to get those adoption rates up. I know I am. Okay, so it's real important. Um, with regard to the uh, required course materials, you've got two sections on here. One where I guess you're picking your saying what it is, and the other one says, "Will you we ask students to purchase something from an outside source?" That's just um, if we open it up to students, where they can purchase it from wherever, either the bookstore or somewhere else, or is that? Um, that's a that's a two that's a two part answer. The top part of it here is the traditional book. If you're using a traditional book that you've always used, that's pretty much where it has the book title, ISBN, and so forth. If you are requiring something of the student that's not a book that we wouldn't put on our shelf, mm -hmm. per se, then that's that second half of the page. Okay. Where you might, you know, maybe you don't have a book, maybe you just have supplies. Right. And so you would leave that blank because that's asking for book information. Okay. And you, you would fill out, you know, the bottom half of it. Some use both. I have a music class that uses a book, and then they also use, they need combs, you know, the, the combs for the, to, to make, the, to write the music with and paper and things like that. And we have both of those on the shelf side by side. Because we can supply, supply supplies, you know, in some cases, but in some cases we can't. So um, the, will you ask students to purchase something from an outside course? That's just a radio button that you check. Right. Um, and so if there are a variety of materials, how do we go about notifying? When you click Not yes on that radio button, when yeah. you click yes, the drop box will come in and you will just fill out what you need. And I don't need specifics. Mm -hmm. I, I really, I mean, you can, li you can list them if you want, but if it's like, I need this and this and this. If it is something specific, then list it. We're not gonna put what you require on the website mm -hmm. uh, because we, we can't. And, and who's to say that the brush at, you know, this person next door is $10 and the same brush is $5. We can't. We don't want pricing because the students have a, a choice to be able to do it. So we're just going to list that there's costs involved, see the syllabus, go to class first, okay. so that they have that ability, that information at the top. Uh, with the outside sources, would that also count things like Pearson and the writing lab and things like that? No, that was a, that's with your book order. That's with the book. Uh, yeah, because you're going to order, when you order your book, and it usually comes with the My Writing Lab or the... Or well, I think it does if, you, if you're using a Pearson textbook, but if you're not using a Pearson textbook, if, if you're using a product that's just a digital product, um, we still ask that you turn that into the bookstore right. because, again, for the student who's on scholarship right. or financial yeah. aid, okay. they can't go to that website. And so that's where it would go. In the you can list it okay. there. Okay. You know, if we can put it on our shelf, yeah. we're going to move it and put it on our right. shelf because sometimes we can be right. just as compare, uh, competitive with um, an online pricing. Right. We can work out a deal with that same publisher that says, why don't you give it to us? Right. I mean, it keeps the business on the campus. And it still gets the business to them. Right. So yeah, you can list it there. Okay. If, if we need to move it to the book section, yeah. we will. Okay. And sorry, and this might be too, too particular to my case, but I'm thinking about using a customization book for mm -hmm. Pearson. Mm -hmm. But I would be fine with students using like the older, um, the regular edition because okay. it's the same thing. It's just right. you know. So would you list? Where would I put that in a form? You're gonna list. You're gonna list that up at the top because uh -huh. it's gonna be a book that you're gonna work with the publisher right, so on. It's nice Right, and you're gonna. There's a question that says, "Will you uh, use the old edition?" And you can mark yes. Okay, I think it's down at the bottom of it, though. It's one of the last questions on the page. Will you be using the old edition? Okay. Okay. So, and you bring up a good point. Remember, the deadline is the deadline, right? right? But if you call me up and say, "Hey, I'm working with a publisher," then I will put on your on your record that it's in process, and you will not be counted as being late. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And this will call in section nine. So if you have, if you're not sure how to list something, there's yes, still a comment right section that, that you right. can say, here's what I'm doing. I didn't know how to mark that. Right. Because yes. that's still and, and by all means, give us a call directly. Okay. We love to talk to people because all we do is sit behind the desk all day. Okay. So, I mean, my phone rings, I get all excited. Okay. Um, and, and Juanita and Kelly are the same way. You know, we're all, we're constantly there trying to get the orders done. But we don't mind you calling us. We'd rather you call us 10 times so that we get the book order right. 
okay? And believe me, if there's something on there that we don't understand, we're gonna call you. We're gonna email you, okay? And say, hey, uh, give me a buzz, I don't, I don't get it. Can I ask you about the, um, the dental textbooks? How do, so you're saying here that you could put a link for students to follow through, to go to these external websites? If you, if you are using an external website, that has a digital book that we can't get a hold of and you're requiring the students to have it, we need to know what that link is. Right. Okay. But we when you turn in your book order, yeah. if that book is available right. digitally, yeah. we're gonna automatically put it on the record. Okay. So that the student again has an option. They have a format, right? So maybe the, the new book that's coming out, the fifth edition, is also available in an ebook. Right. Okay. If it is, I'm automatically gonna make that option available to the student. Unless you say I don't want them to right. use an ebook. But why wouldn't you? Yeah. It's a lot cheaper. Right. Okay, we automatically add that in there. Yeah. I was just wondering, for, I guess from the business perspective, because you're sending them somewhere else, that doesn't... Right, yeah. you're absolutely right. right. I mean, you know, and, and you I'm know, we're, we'd love to have the business, right. but there's certain reasons why that they have to go to the website. Right. Maybe that particular publisher does not sell the bookstores, okay? But the, but the point being is that we have to know that you're sending them there in case we have a student on financial aid, right. in case we have a student with, with a scholarship, in case Rima needs that information for a student that might, you know, for her, for her students, okay? Because again, turning all those orders in early makes her job a lot easier because she needs that information. So it just doesn't affect the bookstore. Turning that book order in early, a lot of people request that information from us um, and we need to be able to give that information to them, again, to benefit the students. And if we don't have that information, the student may come into Rima and say, I, I need this in a, in a different format. She's like, I don't even have this order. I don't even know about this, you know, this title. Giving her the advantage of some early you know, um, information, she can start. And if not, sometimes she gets blindsided by, I don't know what this is, right? Right? Okay. Great questions, guys. Hmm? Oh, okay, now I, I can t I'm gonna tell you this, but it hasn't gone into the final approval stage yet. We're still waiting on final approval. But remember I told you I'm gonna get my adoptions in? Okay, here's what I wanna do. We keep track of all the schools and all the departments within the schools as to what their adoption rates are. So if you called me and said, what did, you know, math do? You know, did they turn it in or did they not turn it in? If you were, if you were the dean of that school, I could tell you. Okay, I don't share that information because obviously I don't want to share that information with everybody on every want, right? So here's what we do. We know what schools, what their adoption rates are. So in an effort to promote on-time adoptions, we are starting with approval this year, a textbook scholarship, a course material scholarship. And basically what that is saying is that the school that has the greatest percentage of increase over last semester will receive a thousand dollar grant for their school to be used as the dean sees fit, okay? Now, we didn't wanna do it by department because there's lots of different reasons why departments are higher and lower, okay? But overall, the eight schools, the percentage is about the same, right? So we wanna see the greatest increase in between them. So you might see a letter coming down from the dean in a couple of weeks saying, hey, I'd really like to be part of this, you know, turn your orders in. Um, but we think we're gonna be, able, we're gonna be able to do this each semester as an incentive to get the book orders turned in. My old boss, before I took over course materials, would say, well, I don't like to give out candy bars to my professors because they turn their orders in on time because that's part of their job, that's what they should do. And I'm not such a believer of that. You know, there's, I think the reason why we don't get the book orders in is because there's a misunderstanding of what the disadvantage is of not turning that book order in. And I've just shared that with you, okay? That it's important and that's why it's important It's because as an ALS committee member, community member, you're looking for ways to drop the costs and I'm giving you the ways to do that. Just by running a book, you're, you're, you're participating, okay? Do you have any um, literature for faculty, you know, looking at the, uh, the idea of the, um, you know, purchasing, um, you know, class materials, not necessarily books. Right. I don't think many faculty know that that is a requirement for us to, to submit that information to, to the library and, uh, so, I, I mean, I doubt any art class is doing that right now. Right. And uh, um, just about every art class has required materials. Right, so and, and you probably know that we have some art materials in the, in the bookstore, but we don't have everything. Right. And so what we did this last semester is that, I, I talked about music earlier. We have three music classes that require a certain 
um, ream of paper and a certain binding cone that they use for their classes and so forth. And we've not carried those before. And so what we have done is we tried to work out a package price um, with that professor to say, you know what, we'll bring all this stuff in the store if we can, and we'll try and get a lower cost on it if we can buy it in bulk or whatever, if you send your students to the bookstore. So in the case of art supplies or things like that, it's really hard to go out and get, because there's some, there's some classes that require very specific things, and we can't get the best cost on them, and they might have it somewhere else. Right. But if you have something that you say, you know, these are all the things I need for my class, and we can look at it, I can give it to the buyer that handles the general merchandise in the store, and say, is this something that we can go to that particular vendor and ask for, and would they give us a better cost on it, and can we lower the cost of that, and it's a one-stop shop for the student, is there a way we can package that together? Um, we'll find out and we can let you know. Right, but you were saying, I mean, most most art classes, if they're doing traditional art, they're gonna send the students over to Allard. Or right. Something. There's just some persnickety about the things that they need. Exactly. But you were saying that we have to notify you so that it can be put on the website that there are additional costs and that the student needs to see the syllabus. Yes. So I was just curious if you had anywhere that kind of explains that, that I can direct faculty to so that they know that they're supposed to do that. Um, I don't have anything specific enough on that yet, but we can probably come up with something. Um, because the new HEOA stuff is coming through and it's more um, available now, we can probably incorporate that into our letters that we send to the professors or to the admins or the deans that says, These, this is the information we need. Um, they're all supposed to fill out the course material requisition form. And that has a spot set that talks about that, right. but not. But a lot of our classes, we don't have textbooks. Right. So we just, honestly, I get stuff right. from the bookstore or something. <laughs> right. Well, I'm saying that now we send it to everybody. Yeah. Whether you've used a yeah. textbook in the past, if you're assigned that class, yeah. you should be getting something from us, whether okay. you used it or not. Now, that wasn't different from in the yeah. past, but going th when we started the form last semester, um, if, you were, if you were set mm -hmm. to teach a course, you were going to get an email from us. Mm -hmm. So it might have gone in your inbox and gone right back out. Right. But we do send it to everyone now. Right. So if you're on that roster, if you're on that, for, that import mm -hmm. that says you're teaching that class, then you're going to get something. Either, hopefully earlier, mm -hmm. sometimes the, the professors aren't listed until later. Um, but we try to get them out. Uh, we'll see if we can get something in the finger, maybe out to everybody. If we go through the dean and the dean can forward it through, or through the academic senate, and they can forward it through, then we might be able to get some better information on it. Okay. But I'll write that down. Any other questions? Come and see us, we get lonely, you know, and don't hesitate. My phone number is in there, in that folder, and so is my director's phone number, um, and we would love to make sure that we help you out dropping these costs and, and just spreading the word that getting those adoptions on time, really, that's the key. That really saves the students the money, is by letting us know what we can get started on right now, okay? So now I expect to see everyone's book order in my inbox here real soon. Thank you.